All right, today is the day, and we are here looking at door hinges and door placement, door fitment on the Arate project. Now, to get the doors fitted in there, we have had to make some adjustments. I talked a little bit about this in a previous video, but we are going to go today in depth on looking at how this is all going to take place. And we are changing up. We had some um, articulating hinges that we we're going to be putting in, but because of some problems with um, fitting of actuators under the dashboard and interfering with some pedals and steering columns. And well, there's lots of problems in there. So to solve the problems, we have to adapt and move to something different. And to do that, we are going to go to a new style of hinge. Now I showed you in the last video, a 3D model of this part, and I've printed it up here 3D. We'll be casting these in aluminum, but many of you recognize that this is probably a door hinge. And that is correct. We're going to be changing up to this hinge, we are going to be calling it Koenigsegg style hinge um, because Koenigsegg is probably the most famous for making this popular in their automobiles. Um, Christian Koenigsegg, he loves to say the name of this, which is a uh, dihedral coaxial something, I don't know. Anyway, that's why we're calling it Koenigsegg, who wants a long name when you can just refer to something that everybody will be familiar with. Anyway, to make this hinge fit, we have had to do some adaption around the door frame. There's a little panel up there that I will show you that we are adding some structural strength to to put, the, put that hinge right in place there. We're going to take a look at that and a little bit of uh, fitting and things that have been going on around that door. Anyway, let's jump in, take a look. Now, most of this is going to be about the hinge and how we're going to attach this door, but part of that has been the separation of the door into a couple of pieces. Now, this roof panel which is now changing, gonna have the glass coming up against rubber seal. It, it begins here, but this part here was actually an extension down into the lower part of the door. So we've had to cut that out. We're gonna add an extension into it to um, basically extend that uh, flap down to accept the rubber seal. And to just make sure everything's gonna be all right, how much room I have to put that on, I'm just gonna check all the fittings and just do a little bit of fitting here. This is just a rough fitting. We'll go back in and actually do all our panel gaps and stuff very particularly in the end. But once we get all these things fitting just the way they need to be, we have to uh, create a little flange there to uh, put this whole system back in to accept the new weather stripping. And I've just bent up a piece of aluminum, light gauge piece of aluminum, and going to uh, clamp it in place on the back of that edge to create what that little uh, step back is, that flange, I guess we could say, where that rubber seal is gonna go to match the existing that's already there. And then once that's in place, just laminate it up against it. Just a quick lamination, we'll go ahead and reinforce all this, trim it back nicely and fit it. Okay, that's just kind of the upper door. We're gonna be working mostly in this video on the lower side of the door and where this uh, hinge mount system is gonna go. Now, if you remember, there's this uh, bulkhead or this panel right here in right behind the front tire. And we're going to extend that out and actually fit it right up against the door skin. There'll be a bigger inside clamshell, but this would be forward of that. And we want to have a little rubber seal on that as well that's going to close up against that door. So I've created a template inside here and taped it in place right up against the door. And once I have that exactly where I want it, we're going to now cut the door out. It is bonded in place by the A pillar. We did that in a previous video. But we will cut that one last little cut where that A pillar is gonna separate from the door. Pull it off and there you see the little template we just created on the inside taped to that flap bulkhead. Now that little template I created, I don't want it to bond to some laminations we're gonna do on the front of that thing. So I'm gonna put some aluminum tape on here and wax that aluminum tape just so we can get a release from that and our laminations. Now this is just a real duct tape, real aluminum flashing tape for putting in heating duct system. Excellent for coating or covering something if you want to get a release on it. We'll accept some releasing agent or wax, whatever you want to put on that. And once we've got that thing all coated, we're going to do, like I said, a lamination on top of that. I just put three or four layers on here to uh, extend this little panel bulkhead out right up to the edge of our template. That will form the edge that we want. Now with this 
little panel bulkhead didn't have to have a lot of strength originally. It was just, I guess the worst thing it would ever have taken would be maybe a blowout that would have flown up against the front of the door. But we need to add some more strength to it. And that is going to be done by adding a perpendicular piece into the front. The perpendicular piece will also be basically the bottom side of the mounting point for our door hinge. We get this uh, lamination done on here. We'll flip around to the side and I'll start to go into the explanation of that piece and how that's going to be created. Now this is extension that we just created into this template, like I said, goes right up against the door skin. It will be trimmed back to the width of the rubber seal in the end. Now we're getting close to the finished products we're going to be seeing on these things, so I tried to go take a little extra care and attention to make sure our laminations are nice and smooth and pretty in case nothing else goes on to there. When we get a finish on there, it will look nice. Once that's uh, hardened up, next day, go back in. We're going to pull that template right off, just tear it off. And we'll have to get some... Uh, solvent to clean the wax or the releasing agent we put on that foil tape. Now here I'm going to pour some foam into a little form I've created right up against that panel to create that perpendicular piece. Just some cardboard and tape. Just very rough because we're going to pour some expanding foam in there and just let it go crazy. You'll also see the bottom side of this form is a piece of aluminum sheet metal that I've bent into a curve that actually creates an aerodynamic duct that's flowing from the wheel well out underneath the door. And once our foam's expanded, we're going to start taking all that formed out. Here comes that aluminum piece I was just talking about. You'll see later on as we get this thing trimmed out that curve, nice curve that was created for that aerodynamic duct. A little panel I used to hold the foam in place. And we're just going to start stripping off all our forms and the, some of this foam just kind of snuck out through some cracks. We're going to break that out, get all the form material out of the way, and then start shaping this thing. And remember also that I'm each time I do something here, I'm doing the same thing on the opposite side of the car, trying to keep everything exact and symmetrical. But we got our forms torn off, get our little uh, Japanese uh, carpenter saw out start trimming this foam back. Now you'll see I'm cutting it back further than the flange we just created because that flange needs to stick out and accept the rubber seal, a little clamp onto there. We also have to pay attention to the transition of this new piece that we're creating in the foam here that's going to come back around and tie to our little door seal. And it's going to extend also back up onto our A pillar and into the extension that goes into the footwell. So this will give us a little strength as well into that A-pillar connection and into the footwell. See, I'm cutting right along that little uh, footwell extension, so trying to get it adapted. Always, of course, with the saw, just cutting roughly and oversized because I want to go back in with a rasp and some sandpaper to uh, start finishing and shaping it, getting it real perfected. So I can run my uh, rasp right up against the existing fiberglass work. Because in the end we will be of course uh, scoring that with some sandpaper to get our bond onto the old fiberglass. Shaping this thing in with the rasp. With the rasp I can get a good flat smooth surface transition but again it comes down to getting a nice little sanding block and uh, smoothing this foam out. But of course the foam is way too rough to work with and uh, I've mentioned how this works before in many videos that we always coat this uh, foam over with a fiberglass microbloom slurry to get a smooth surface to start doing our fiberglass work on. We'll be doing that in just a moment. I've got a few stubborn little pieces of foam sticking to that uh, area right there and get a little piece of sandpaper because we want to make sure we sand all the foam away because we want to get right down, break into the fibers of the existing layers so that our next fiberglass layers will bond fiberglass to fiberglass rather than having resin or foam in between those layers. And as we get that thing pretty close, I'm going to put the door skin on and test it, 
fits nice and tight up against that uh, blue flat bulkhead that we extended with the template, but a little tight on the foam there. Got a particular distance I want into there because there's going to be another another piece of uh, weather stripping trim that goes on there. So shape that, and then we're pretty close. Now I did not get a video of uh, doing the laminations on top of this slurry after going down here, but we will jump into that in just a moment and talk about it. But this slurry mixed up it's where you can put it on with a paintbrush. But there are some areas that I want to get nice fillets in and um, feel some errors, some little low spots. So as I get this thing completely covered, I'm going to run back, put some more microspheres in it, mix it up a little bit thicker, go in and do some shaping. That's bodywork filling. And then I have these uh, tongue depressors, popsicle sticks, you want to have giant popsicle sticks. Use those to give myself a nice round radius curve go down through the trench and then fix it up with the squeegee and of course sand it all down once it's hardened up and start to do my laminations the laminations of course that i just told you i did not get a video of and there it is but here is the hinge and where it's going to place the hinge will be a bracket that'll be bolting through there and down below it'll hinge in here and swing out just like that Okay, so there you got it. We have been adapting that front there and we will be actually making a playlist of all the door videos because there's going to be quite a few of them to get the door fit, the door filled, the inside door clamshells built, windows, all those things. So I will be making a playlist, inserting this into that special playlist. And in future videos, if you're coming along and discovered this video in the future, you will be able to start here and go forward. If you find a future video, which we haven't, of course, yet, because that's in the future, but there will be a card at the end of those videos that will bring you back here. And glad you came by here. Hope you stay. See some more. Anyway, if you have not subscribed to the channel and like this kind of content, we ask you, please jump down, subscribe, touch the little icon bell that will give you notifications when all these videos come up. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. Come back. See us again.